Is there, is there a 102 and a 103 or just the 101? Uh, 101, because this is, I hope, considered basic. <laughs> cool. Wasn't true. <laughs> okay, James, you ready? Okay, cool. Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, Quality Drafting 101. Um, just kind of wanted to give a few caveats here. Um, uh, this training was created a while back, and so it focused mostly on AutoCAD. But um, drafting covers any tool, any software you're using, even if you were drawing by hand. Um, these are just principles um, to help you get good quality of your drawings. And um, I'm specifically looking at details in this presentation, but again, the principles apply to floor plans, edge slabs, elevations, sections, whatever you're drawing. Um, again, I'm just covering basic principles of good quality drafting. Okay. All right, so, so you're not listening to me. Would someone like to volunteer to read this little paragraph from a professional engineer out in the industry somewhere? And if I don't get a volunteer, I will choose someone. <laughs> Steve, you raise your hand. I'm reading. All right. Okay, I like this. Drafting is more than a skill, it is an art. A well drafted drawing is a thing of beauty. With balance, composure, and form it is clear, intelligible, and intuitive. Poor drafting is just a cluttered, unintelligible mess prone to error and misinterpretation. The goal of a well drafted drawing is to clearly and unambiguously communicate the form and fabrication of the design to the manufacturer. CAD does not by itself create good drawings. It is simply a drafting tool. CAD doesn't aid the draftsperson any more than an eraser shield used to. Drafting is the art, and CAD is nothing more than the paint or the brushes that an artist uses. And good drafting doesn't take any longer to do than bad drafting. If anything, a good draftsman can work faster than a poor one because he is systematic and direct rather than haphazard and meandering. A well-drawn drawing is also quicker and easier to check. Thank you. So this came straight out of my drafting book from high school back when I was drawing by hand. Um, but I really like everything in this, um, what he says. Um, so again, it is a, an art and it doesn't necessarily mean your drawings are wrong. It's just, are you uh, skilled at your craft or are you a little haphazard? So again, this is just to reiterate some nice things to help um, improve your art of your drawings. Bonus points to anyone who knows what a, an erasing shield is. Mm -hmm. Who's ever used one? <laughs> okay. All right, so this is just an example um, of the same information, same exact details, but presented in different ways. So just to show the point across, um, you can see the difference. I hope you can see some of the differences. Um, exactly the same stuff, nothing was added or removed. It was just one's been placed much more neatly than other. So you may see like what, um, makes good, a good detail versus maybe not so good. Uh, one that's easier to read or easier to see the content and one that kind of gets you distracted or your eyes can't follow very well. So it's just, um, Lynn, can you stop marking please? Lynn, please, thank you. Um, so this is just an example. It's just an example um, to show the, again, the same information, wouldn't say right or wrong, right? But hopefully you can see a difference in a good quality detail versus a not so good quality detail. So I wonder, oh, sorry. I, 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 I saw that you want to teach us which one's better or not. So I try to compare both. Do you want to go detail for us? Which one's good? Which It one's will bad? be, that will be a hands-on later. Okay, <laughs> you're jumping ahead. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, one other annotation, standard annotation, are dimensioning. So there is an industry standard, again, set by the very first people who drew drawings by hand and any other tool they had. Um, so these are the basic, again, guidelines that anybody who took a drafting class should have learned. Um, so you want to give all the necessary dimensions to communicate the design. Nothing extra and try not to over dimension. Uh, you need to place the dimensions clearly 
so that you don't cross extension lines, you don't um, place it directly on an object or cross some other dimension. You want to indicate any dimension that's not to scale, again, because they should all be drawn to scale, so if it's not, it should be noted. Uh, you want to clearly dimension all the features, and you don't, I like this one, you never want to expect your manufacturer or whoever's using your drawings to assume anything, okay? Uh, you want to place your dimensions uniformly throughout the drawings. And so Walters Wolf, we have our own standards, which we will go over. Um, but again, this is a snapshot from Basic Drafting 101 book <laughs> from way back when. Uh, but just a good example of how each object is clearly dimensioned. And if someone were to build this object, they have the information they need to do so from your drawing. And that's the thing. And it's clear, easy to read. And like the previous note said, it's also easy to check as well. Okay, so then uh, beyond details, there's notes. So a bunch of leader notes, we find a lot of notes go on drawings. So again, good practices here. So this is another example. This is from an architect. So if an architect could do it, we could do it. So you can see though, it's a good example how you could see all of the lines of their edges of their text are all in line. Most of their leaders are pretty much at the same angles of each other. It's very clear what they're pointing to. They don't have two arrows pointing to the same object. Um, so again, it's just a nice example of how clean and your eye is just kind of pleased uh, to look at this. It's not hard to understand or see, um, just very easy to read, easy to follow. And if you had some drawing tools, it should be easy to draw annotations and tags like this. So these are just a few notes, again, the key points. Uh, the notes should be horizontally oriented on the drawing sheet. They should be located as close as possible to the detail element they are describing with the leader line. But again, you don't want to cross or um, overlap the objects that you're um, noting. Um, they shouldn't overlap the image, the drawing itself, dimensions or symbols, and it should be easy to read. So I hope, again, this is just a little example of a nice example of how notes are nice and clearly placed and very easy to read. All right, so now we get a little more to what's Walters and Wolf's standards. So this again is just a snip straight from our wiki of our shock drawing standards uh, for annotation practices. Um, so again, I don't want to read through them all so you guys aren't just listening to me lecture. Um, would any of you like to read like two or three of these points at a time and we'll just go down? James Sankul, would you like to read the first three? Yes, Esley Perez, I'll start. <laughs> well, because there's another James in here. <laughs> okay. All right. All linear dimensions will be rounded to a 16th unless otherwise noted. At sloped and segmented walls, all linear dimensions will be rounded to a 32nd. And all angular dimensions will be rounded to 0, 0.00 degrees. All right, Alin, would you like to read the next three? Sorry, where are you able to read the next three, Lynn? Oh, no. Okay, sorry. Um, Mike? I can get it. The dimensions will be aligned, spaced by half inch in paper space, and consistent, working from the dimension point in. Dimensions will work from largest end to the smallest, and dimensions should never be exploded. Perfect, thank you. Uh, James Watts, would you like to read the next three? Yeah, on details, vertical dimensions, that is dimensions running vertically, will start one and one half inch from the left edge of the detail when possible, and horizontally, horizontal dimensions will start one half inch from the top edge of the detail when possible. Avoid over dimensioning and unnecessary dimensions. Notes will be orderly, left aligned, and aligned with each other with minimal leader crossover. Thank you. Jack, you want to read the last three? Or no, sorry, next three. Notes. Notes will be kept simple and consistent throughout the drawings. Use repetitive note tags when possible. Use common abbreviations used on shop drawings. Perfect. Uh, and I think Celine, sorry, my screen. Celine, you there? You want to read the last yes. one or two? Yeah. Uh, any material that is not in our scope of work will be noted not by Walters and Wolf. It is not necessary to call out any specifics regarding this material by others. 
on all sheets, objects, and dimensions will be held one and a half inches away from the left edge of the drawing in paper space to keep the portion of the drawing from being hidden by the binding when possible. Okay, so you can see how old these notes are when we used to print. <laughs> that was a concern. <laughs> but so that maybe could be taken out uh, since we're gone digital. Um, so these are our drafting standards um, for Walters and Wolf. And I just put a little image up here and we'll show, I'll show this also later, um, but it sometimes gets confusing. The part where um, it says the dimensions will start inch and a half from the left of the detail and then horizontals will start, uh, dimensions start half, ed, half inch from the edge. So if you look at this little image over here, uh, I just put this dimension here, sorry, it's a little small. Um, but the inch and a half would be the minimum of where the first dimension string should be placed. But because there was this extra text there, it would overlap. So then we went an extra in half inch again. And so now it's um, the first dimension string is two inches away from the left edge of the detail. And then each subsequent line of dimensions is half inch from there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so inch and a half is the minimum. You don't want it to be any closer than that inch and a half. And then horizontally, um, I'll show it in another slide, but when we're talking about the edge of the detail, it's really where the edge of the detail is trimmed. So in this case, we can say edge of glass. And so the first dimension in this direction should be minimum half inch away if possible, and then half inch, half inch for any subsequent dimension. Any questions? Yeah, Leslie, could you zoom in this one? I want to see what is here. It says inch and a half minimum. I can't what, zoom, it's what, what, a PowerPoint. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the a, what's a text underneath? It says Does minimum. It face off system? It says minimum. But we don't, I don't know what is this dimension to. That's my point. It's, is it's that just a face off system? Okay, no. So that is just a reference dimension to show you where if our standard would be inch and a half minimum to place your first dimension string I to see. dimension this detail. But because, so because I have- stand here. That's why I'm trying to say, if you try to give dimension, you need to let user understand what's the point for. Maybe you should say face off system. So, or stand or, or something reference. Okay, these, are, these are not to be published. This is just for this training oh. to show you that what I'm trying to explain. Those would not be printed on your sheet. Oh, got it. Okay, any other questions? Okay, and so this is from the wiki. So if you have any more questions or you want to refer to this again, it's on the shop drawing standards and then section 7.8. All right. Um, so little things equal big difference in quality. So again, again, these are just from my experience. Um, that help uh, make your details clean. And then we'll look at some examples and we'll just kind of take, um, we'll mark stuff up on the screen together to see what you guys catch. Um, so um, trimming details and the dimensions to the same plane. So again, you'll see examples of that where maybe your edge of your glass is trimmed at one point, but your dimensions are way up here. Uh, so again, the edge of your detail, basically where it's cut, is what I'm referring to as the plane. Um, so those little things help your details look clean. Um, your dimensions aligning on the sheet, so not just within your one detail, but next also aligning with the details next to it or around it on the sheet. If they all align on the sheet, it actually makes your sheet look nicer. Um, no crossing leaders, so again, try not to cross anything. Um, don't overlap your text dimensions or notes on top of other objects on the detail. Uh, your notes aligning, like we saw in the example, with each other and try not to place them on an image. Keep that consistent dimension spacing on all your dimensions uh, because it does make it pretty obvious when you see some dimensions that are not that typical half inch spacing. And we'll see that in some examples. Um, half scale details should be just for layout. Uh, if you try to put a bunch of notes on half scale details, as we all know, it's usually pretty cluttered, looks bad. Um, so again, half scale details should just have layout dimensions and then blow up call up call outs for blow up details where you can annotate more properly. 
Uh, we don't want any floating dimensions, and I'll show you what those are um, in the samples where your dimension strings just don't really point to anything. Um, and then a few tips. Um, these were a little more for AutoCAD. Um, for second line of text dimension, I won't go over that, but that's for AutoCAD users. Um, linear dimensions are better than aligned in AutoCAD. Uh, construction lines um, to help you align things, but in Revit, there is a tool that um, a lot, it does create that reference plane as you're pulling notes to align them. So use that tool. Um, you want to look at your entire sheet, not just individual details. Um, you can use, again, an AutoCAD tip of the dim continue so that you can get continuous dimensions that automatically align with each other. And then you, it's better to use our drafting tools in the Walters and Wolf toolbars rather than copying and pasting stuff from old drawings. So again, those are a little more AutoCAD specific, but um, yes, that's what I have. Okay, so now we're going to look at some examples. Um, so I don't want the screen to go crazy. Okay, so please just take maybe two or three things that you see and just use your uh, Zoom annotations and just maybe circle it and try to use a small circle so that we could still see the detail, okay? So if each of you can just maybe see if you can find two things that you notice and just circle at least two. And then like I said, we'll see if we catch them all, okay? And again, some of them are really exaggerated, but it's just for demonstration purposes, okay? Let me get. All right, so I hope that's big enough. Let me. Yeah. Okay, so we'll look at it like this. I'll try not to move, but hold on. I'm trying to just get a little bit bigger here. Is that big enough? So just try to find two things and just kind of circle it of things that you can kind of tell are a little out of whack, could be better. That's it. <laughs> or we that's said not two. That many people. Well, you said two. There's 15 people in here. Should be 30 more. Anything else? All right, everybody do one more. <laughs> There's a couple more things in here. All right, we good? Because what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to take a snapshot of the markups. I'll put it on the side because once I move the screen, all your markups are going to make no sense. Okay, everybody good? Are you everybody uncapping good? our limit? Oh, as you see more? Well, so I'm asking you need more time? We're only doing the bottom detail, correct? No, the whole sheet. Oh, the whole sheet, okay. Because we're talking about sheet placement, Annotations, quality of the whole sheet. It's hard to read in your dark background. <laughs> I have okay, well, you don't have to read the, it's not the content. So you don't have to read anything. It's just the quality. Well, it's like I'm looking for, I just talk about the dimension, like what's the dimension point? Because I'll try to read the content that phase off systems or glass dimension that I'm looking for. So it's hard to see for me. Um, okay. Well, I said, we'll zoom in, but I just wanted to see what you guys see. Okay, so I'm going to take a snapshot. I'll move it over to the side. All right, so hopefully this works. Let me move it for a second. All right, so can you guys, let me see, do I have control to clear the screen? Uh, there we go, okay. So, I'm going to go into model space where I have the clean detail versus the not so clean. 
So we'll look at the bottom first, and I'm actually just going to delete that. Anyway. And again, this I'm saying clean, meaning from the library. Okay, <laughs> so my, not my personal preferences here. This is from the library. Okay, so if we look at um, these two details side by side now, a little bit bigger, can you see a difference? First off, hopefully visually you can see a difference. Um, hopefully you notice the consistent dimensioning. Um, the crisscrossing leaders doesn't happen over here, which there were quite a few. Um, crossing dimensions, no good. Uh, this was overlapping the objects, right? So here you have that half inch gap. Um, so again, just seeing it, I hope you can just tell, I don't wanna go over every little thing, but hopefully you can see a difference. Again, same content, nothing was added or deleted. Um, maybe the six and a half dimension was deleted. Um, but the notes and stuff is again all about placement where whoever drew these two details chose to put their notes and again it's the same notes they're just placed differently oh no okay. so we're gonna go to the next one all right so here's the horizontal zoom in a little bit okay so this one had less notes but still could have errors or poor quality, right? So you would think less notes, it should be easy to make it nice and clean, right? But um, so here we had dimensions not following the spacing. Same here, you can see how tight these are. So that's totally not half inch. So again, not wrong, same exact dimensions, but just spaced incorrectly, right? So we have crossing leaders here. This leader also again, crossing the glass. So just kind of, again, two very similar and not as many notes, but still one looks cleaner than the other. <laughs> I don't want to mess up anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, so we're, we're not marking up anymore, uh, Lynn. Okay. So, but, so again, any questions on that? Again, just trying to give an example and we'll do one more. I think it's very clear your, 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 your mind. I mean, your, your point over there. It's very good. I like okay. that. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I think, I think that one of the things that makes it a little bit clear, I don't know if it's just me, but the hatching on gaskets has just <laughs> taken away, you know, it looks just yeah. more clear for me. <laughs> yeah. That's part of our um, new standards. Okay. So now we'll do one more just for a little more, hopefully fun. Um, so now again, you'll look at this whole sheet. Sorry, it's as big as I'm going to get it. So same thing. Go ahead. There you go. Um, mark up what you see. And again, maybe we'll go to maybe start with, uh, let's go with three, maybe. Oh my God. I, I don't like this cross. Um, let's have personal preference, but anyway, I don't know. They have preference. And also, you know, some nodes you can put the left for here. You can put the left or put the right. For my, if you really picky, you probably put all this reference, like this block, in one side, or the text kind of, you know, it's visually impression, but I'm not sure we have enough time to do that one. You have to really put mind, like artistic mind over there instead of engineer mind. It's different. It's different thinking process. Um. And then also on this one, just take notice of the sheet as a whole. Oh, and the takeoff was just happy to have any detail. <laughs> Different class, Yana. <laughs> <laughs> Yana, we love you. <laughs> and again, these are the type of stuff that I mark up when I review drawings, just saying. So it's not just so much content, it's quality that I, I look for. I'll give you guys one more minute. A lot of stuff here. <laughs> Hard to tell. Okay. It's only a lot because it's a door. <laughs> <laughs> the 
we're not looking at content. We're looking at quality. These are standard details. They're correct. Eric can't help it. He's been looking at door details. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> they are correct. Though. No doors at the building. <laughs> These details are correct. So. Again, it's nothing about being right or wrong. This is just quality. Okay, so are we good? So I'm gonna take a snip shot. So I didn't actually refer to the snip, but I'm just gonna take a snip just in case. Okay. So this one, I wanted to focus on more stuff too in the full sheet, uh, whereas the other one was a little bit more of the details. We'll get into the details um, to show um, the, the, the good, clean one versus not. Um, but this one was more also sheet placement, detail placement. So yeah, so that one of the biggest thing is, yeah, these do not align with each other. The details, um, the FACES system doesn't align from one detail to the next on the same sheet. So they should. Um, this one, I purposely pulled this dimension super close to the border. Um, shouldn't do that. You have plenty of space. There's no need to put your dimensions or your details all the way up to the edge of your title blocks or viewports. Um, it's just, again, not good quality. And if someone were to print this and staple it, guess what? Those would get cut off. So again, you'd be missing information. Um, same with the dimensions aligning with each other. So both of these details go way beyond the inch and a half standard, but even then they don't even align with each other. So this again, I was over exaggerating, but just to show you how two details on the same sheet should still correlate with each other to have a nice presentation on your sheet. So I purposely did this one way off. Um, so hopefully you can see the point. When you see the clean details, hopefully you'll notice the difference. Um, and then, yeah, someone circled these little guys. So that's what I call floating dimension, where it's not dimensioning to anything. Um, it could be dimensioning to something beyond, but it's not touching it. So you don't know uh, what it's dimensioning to. So that's just poor quality. It just looks bad. And again, you're making your person who is looking at drawing assume what it's dimensioning to, which you don't want that dimension, that assumption to happen. Um, same back here, floating, floating. So again, that's just poor drafting practice. Don't want to do that. Um, and then here, yes, yeah, somebody marked this green ticks here. So that's what we were talking about, the plane or the edge of your detail, uh, your cutting plane, so to speak, of where you cut and terminate your detail edge. Um, that kind of virtual line is where everything in your detail that extends beyond should stop at the same point. So you can see how it looks zigzag. It's a little unclear what's going on um, and it just looks bad. So that's just a vertical plane, so to speak, or a detail plane, I refer to it, um, to keep that nice and neat for clarity. Um, all right, so let me look at the clean. So let me clear this. And let me just be clear. All right, so let's look at the clean. Just again, for comparison's sake. So he, just to look at the sheet, let's just move it closer. So just looking at these next to each other, again, hopefully you see the difference between a nice quality versus poor quality sheet. Okay, so as a sheet, it's nice and clean. Okay, so I'm going to put these on top of each other so we can compare the details. Close. We'll look at this one. Hopefully that's big enough. Nope. All right, I'm gonna have to move it. Be a better. Should get the door out of there. <laughs> Duly noted. Don't use a door detail. Okay, so Again, so this is the clean detail on the left and then the not so clean detail on the right. Um, so again, one thing I was just kind of also exaggerating is um, the double dimension of this two and three quarter. And hopefully that never happens. Um, you shouldn't double dimension. If you dimensioned one object once, that's all that it takes. 
Um, you can see the edge here is all cleaned up um, and then spaced half inch, half inch, half inch. Um, again, this one, the dimensions were not spaced. You can see all the floating dimensions, pretty much cleaner. Um, and then you can also see the notes are also now more in line with each other much less haphazard than this one over here. So again, same notes, just placed differently. Okay, so let's go to the other one, just for completeness. And then we'll jump into the next slide. So here's, this one has the clean detail on the right and the not so clean on the left. So again, like this one, you know, dimension clearly, wrong spot, right? Um, the gasket leader crossing the numbers. You can see how far away the dimensions were pulled here. Didn't have to be that far. Again, the notes a little, some going this way, some going that way. So again, here we have the notes all in line as best as possible and then all the way around. So it just kind of helps, even though it is a tricky detail and this one has a lot of components to it, um, you can still make it easier for the person looking at it if you can keep your notes out of there <laughs> as much as possible so they can really digest the content and not be distracted by your notes. All right. Any questions? We good? I have a question, Esley. Yes. So right now that you had both left and right details side by side, what I noticed is the, the this detail on the right side of the door doesn't have the dimensions like the other one does. If you look at the other yeah, these. Detail, these. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to share or would you want to have the left with those dimensions and then the right also but pointing the other way? Good question. So very good. You, question. This is how it fits on the sheet. So if I move those two details. So on the sheet, again, this is how it would fit. I could put those on the right but it would be cluttered. So in this case, the decision was made for this sheet to not dimension it because that is, like you said, kind of shared space in the middle. Um, I have seen some people actually pull dimension lines, draw dimension lines going in both directions to help clarify that. So you could do that. Um, this is, I think, one of the safe drafting assumption you could make, but if you want to get technically correct, the right should have its own dimensions, the left should have its own, but it would not fit probably on the sheet. Um, then you'd have to start squeezing things, trimming the glass um, and all that. I really like this question. So the, the concept over here is that less is more. You only add any element, dimensions, anything, only as required. Get less, the less the better. Because you don't, because more if you over dimension, it could be cost, confusion later, and then when you modify, you probably subject more work because you have a you know, extra redundant information over there. So that's the key for drawing standard. The top you know, quote on the book is always less is more. You know, does anyone know who said that one? No, no worry about that. <laughs> okay, good. Famous architect would say this. Thanks. All right, okay, that's a good question. Um, okay, so the next part is just accuracy and then we'll get into Revit and then we'll be out of time, I think. So um, so accuracy, so we've just talked about not so much content, we were just talking about noting things cleanly, but another part of having good quality drawings is to be accurate. So you should know what every line that's being shown on that drawing, what that line represents. Is it really there? Is it beyond? What is it? Why is it placed where it's placed? Why is it hidden? Why is it solid? Why is it on the mist layer? Why is it on a sealant layer? Why is it like you, if you as a draftsman don't know what a line is on your detail, you should ask because you are responsible for that drawing. You should know what it is. And if you're pulling from a library, you need to know, does this library detail even work for my condition or do I have to modify it in some way? So just because it's there in the library, you need to know if it works for your job or if it needs modification. Okay, so that's just accuracy. Every line represents something or it could be a mistake. So you're responsible for your details. So just know 
what to draw, what not to draw, how far beyond should we be showing is always a good question. Um, so if you don't know what's on your details, you should ask, um, especially if you're inheriting the details from someone else. So same with hatches. We do a lot of hatches to show notches that are happening way down below. We even show notches that are happening looking up. So it's very confusing, but you should know what those hatches are if your detail is correct or not. Um, because it may not be required for your job, and it could have been just for that one specific case um, that you may have copied from. So again, just know what you're drawing. Um, dimensioning to an object, again, so those floating dimensions, make sure you're actually dimensioning to the actual thing you want to dimension to. Um, know what is happening above, below, left and right of your detail, because that does affect what you may show in your detail or extra notes you may need to add. Uh, you should understand the basic unit assembly of how things are being installed left to right, um, what's field installed, what's going to be done in the shop to make sure things assemble correctly, um, as well as if you might have interference from the you know, perimeter materials, structural, uh, something in the way of things getting in and, I mean, clearance and all that kind of stuff. You should know what's going in first, what's going to be there, um, and be, just, again, visualize it in your head, the order of things, so you can make sure your detail works. Um, so that goes hand in hand with the installation sequence. And again, what's the field gonna have access to? Uh, are we drawing in paper? We could just place anything from this view, but what does the field really have access to? What does the shop really have access to in a 15 foot long piece, right? So again, just kind of, again, remembering to visualize things in 3D. Um, I put here to reference old drawings. So again, I don't like that, but if you're gonna reference old drawings, again, you need to know, does it still apply to your current detail, your current job, and make sure it's using current standards. <laughs> so again, I don't like using old stuff, but if it's drawn and it's gonna save you some time, you just better know what to do to clean it up to make it accurate for your job. Okay, and then yes, if you don't know, don't be afraid to ask. There's a lot of people who've been drafting here for a very long time. Um, that can help you understand the details that you're working with. Can I comment on that last one, Leslie? Sorry, mm -hmm. reference over drawing part. So I like to see it as ref when you're referencing stuff, you just use those as a baseline, right? And then to, to apply it to your situation. So it's just, uh, just a thought. Yeah, it's kind of like a library detail. It yeah. gets you 80% there, but you still need to finish the last 20% and make sure it's right. Yes. All right, so now we're going to get into Revit. So like I was saying, this logic of good quality still carries over to Revit. It doesn't, it's not specific to just AutoCAD, okay? So um, this is a nice diagram Eureka put together to show what I was trying to show in the AutoCAD slide of the, the spacing to use when you're dimensioning. Um, and so she also noted here which dimension type to use in Revit for each dimension string. Um, so again, this is just a nice image, um, and we're hoping to do a more in hands-on Revit detailing training uh, to reinforce some of this. Um, but anyway, so here it is for Revit as well. Um, same, same logic applies. So this one is for annotations. So we just wanted to put this in here as well because you can see the difference in Revit. There's no symbols like we had in AutoCAD. So you have much more space and it's much cleaner so it should be easier to place these notes out of the way and not overlapping stuff. So um, that's just a little caveat to Revit is that it's gonna be hopefully easier to make cleaner um, annotations and details because you don't have all those symbols in the way. Um, this is one of the standards in Revit as well that the leader needs to have a landing. Um, so by default, it gives you the grip, but it wants to just be a, uh, what do you call it, an angular arrow without a bend. But the standard for us is we want that bend or that landing. So that's a Revit detailing standard, um, as well as the arrow leader type. The default will be no leader. So you have to change it the first time to be the arrow filled 30 degrees, and then it'll look like this. And then I believe once you play, set that um, parameter once, all your other tags will come in with that leader on that in that detail uh, drawing you're working in. Um, the subtext, so this was a recent change. Um, it used to be part of the families as uh, called the custom note. So that caused too much headache. It was a lot of back and forth to try to keep fixing families just when the note changed. 
So now the drafter has the freedom to type in their own notes. So all they have to do is click below their note. There'll be a question mark by default. They just click and type and that's it. So um, that's now the drafters can do that at their leisure and what they need to do for their details. Um, and then just a little sub note. Um, this is me and uh, Eureka's little pet peeve. Um, when we have fasteners, for example, two per clip, it should be two slash clip. That's it. Not two per spelled out per clip or two slash per clip or two slash each clip. It's just, that's very poor grammar and it's a little frustrating because it looks silly. It's wrong. So our standard, we're trying to just reinforce the standard. Just put the two slash clip, take out the extra per. So that's just one of the things. Or if you're going to do it, take out the slash. Don't double duty it. So that's one of our little things we're just trying to enforce as a standard. Um, that's stuff that we do clean up. Um, so then here's a little bit more for uh, fastener finish types. So again, I'm not sure how many people have been using this because Adventure's been doing most of the detailing, but um, some drafters still ask the question of how did they change it from stainless or to stainless from plated. Um, so it, um, you don't, the natural tendency, or especially for me, is just to click on this thing and try to edit it like you would in AutoCAD. Doesn't work that way. Um, you click on it, you get the properties window, and then you have to select a box. So, and if you wanted painted and stainless, you just click both boxes and it will make the PF for you. So just kind of putting that out there. So hopefully people learn that it's a, a, a property. It's not editable text. Um, and then the 13 VP and HP, we also wanted to bring that up, that that is a parameter. So it's going to visually still look like a 13 VP, but if your job requires HP for assembly screws, we should have known that at setup. So we should have made the families with the parameter and you would have the same parameters over here to change it to an H or a V. And then it'll change your tag for you, but it'll still look like a VP. So just also putting that out there. Um, so again, we're only doing that per job. So if a job was later requiring a detail and it only has the VP, that just means that detail wasn't made with this parameter and it would have to be updated. The family would have to be updated. Um, another kind of recent change is the hatches. They're no longer part of the family. So they used to be a family parameter, um, just like this, where a draft would have to toggle them on and off. Uh, but again, we found that sometimes those change or need modifying. And it was just, again, a bunch of requests to just fix hatches. So we wanted to give the drafters a little more flexibility so that they don't have to keep asking us to do stuff for them. Um, to fix their details or to add a new hatch or notch. So um, these are now what, we're, what they're called detail group items. And uh, they're based off of the AutoCAD drawing. We make them into Revit detail groups and then they're listed by part um, on the server. And then the drafter just has to look for that part hatch and then they drag and drop it into their detail. If they need to make their own, we made a little video for them how to make it. So they, if by chance the one they need or they need a new one, um, that wasn't there. We put little videos there so that you can make, they can make their own. Um, so again, they don't have to make a bunch of family requests just for notches or hatches. And then this is, I believe, the last one. Um, so glass in Revit is a little more finicky. It's a glass family. Um, so you can't just place it and move it. You have to actually put in the correct dimensions. Um, so the family is called WW Glass. WW Glass Family, I think is what it's called. Um, and it's going to prompt you like a little wizard. It's going to ask you for certain things. Um, and you just have to make sure you start at your corner of your back of pocket of whatever object you're detailing. And then um, you drag your mouse in whichever direction you want the glass to be. And you have to make sure if it's in the wrong orientation to use the space bar to flip it while you're in the wizard. Because if you place it wrong and then you want to mirror it, you now just flipped your inboard to the outboard and your outboard to the inboard. But if you let the wizard do it, it'll keep your outboard as the outboard. So that's one of the things we find a lot that drafters are using like AutoCAD mine. Oh, I'll just flip it. I'll just mirror it. But Revit Smarter, it knows where the inboard and outboard is. And you just probably have messed up your inboard and outboards. Um, so don't do that. Try not to do that. Use the wizard, hit the space bar and let it flip it for you. 
Um, and then your bite size, again, another sometimes the tendency is to just draw it, place it, and then move it. Uh, but again, that would be incorrect. So you need to place it and make sure you put the correct bite to get it in the right spot. Don't move it because if you move it, again, now you just moved your insertion point, which it's Revit is knowing that that's your daylight. So don't kind of fudge it, <laughs> okay, visually in the details. So you want to place it and put the correct numbers. Um, same with the glass makeup. The tool defaults to one inch glass, quarter inch, half inch airspace, and quarter inch. If you don't know what your glass makeup is, you need to ask. Then you shouldn't be detailing. So you should know what your glass makeup is. If it's inch and an eighth, you need to know, is my inboard bigger, my outboard bigger, or my airspace bigger? Otherwise, you could draw them all wrong, and then you have to go back and fix them. So Revit is going to ask you, basically, what's your inboard, outboard, airspace? So if you don't know those, then technically you can't draw your um, glass correctly. So it's a good thing to ask before you start drawing. And if you inherit a drawing from someone else, maybe verify, is the glass drawn correctly? So just so that way you don't catch yourself in a bind and you have to go back and fix them because they'll be technically wrong. Or you're going to pass a defect down and then us as librarians, we're going to have to go back and fix them all. So, um, so just make sure you know your glass types. Um, and then another little caveat to this tool, I just learned it myself, is there is a bite two um, that defaults to half inch. So you can see this nice picture, it gives the inch and a half, but in order to get that, the bite two has to be set to zero. So by default, it's gonna add an extra half inch to your glass. So it'll still look technically correct, but your inch and a half will not be truly inch and a half. So you have to set your zero, your bite two to zero. Um, so that's kind of the only little caveat. So I'm, ask, I'm gonna ask Gabe to just change the default for bite two to always be zero. But as of now, you have to change that. Okay, and that is it. We've got 12 minutes to spare. Was there any questions or we could do feedback if you want? <laughs> uh, I think it's just really like an eye opener to know that you and drafting, they face the same problem as, you know, us tabs, right? The issues like, oh, uh, just the wording of, of certain notes and certain pet peeves, like how you said your pet peeves of wording the clips we have i have a pet peeve of saying like people start using the word drill we established a long time ago not to use that word but people keep putting it in there still literally <laughs> typing it out um yeah i thought it was very interesting and a lot of the stuff uh in this training was very applicable to you know um yeah it's a very good one apps. so that was really cool thanks everyone okay that's all yeah. thank, thank you thank you very much very well uh, presented yeah right more questions? So if I want to put per in my detail. <laughs> yes. Slash per. Don't put the slash. <laughs> oh, okay. Just checking. I, I was going to type it out, but now it sounds like I need a slash. Okay, thank you. Well, and if you do, be consistent. <laughs> we get from detail to detail, it's different. Yeah. I think it's, it's base. It's based on situation. If it's slash makes sense to you or per. I'm, you just want, I think at these points, don't use bird. Don't use both because it's, it's just a counter. Yeah, you're basically, if you read that in English, you're saying two per per, yeah. which is not correct. Yes. <laughs> so. To me, you know, English is not my mother language. I want you guys and standard. That's all the purpose is. Should we, <laughs> should we send this to the Standards League to establish a standard for it? Just kidding. <laughs> Me and Eureka are the standards. <laughs> We're trying to enforce it. And you don't want us to spell out the, the, the quantity of fasteners, correct? So. Because I've seen that like a couple times too. So. Did you literally spell out the number? Like the yeah, like one per and then it was spelled like O-N-E. Well, <laughs> another one too is where people put the at. The, another thing, Ashley, really, you know, my recommendation, I mean, I don't know who's going to do that one. This is actually focus on the, like you said, the artistic looking, how you make the drawing pleasing to the user. But yeah, another quality. thing is, uh, another way how you think about this one is the user friendly. What kind of message do you want to user to get it? So that's another tickle point, how you do this one. Because drawing is always the user experience. Who you are look, who you are with, presenting who's going to use this drawing so that's the have to build in the draft mind 
Yeah, and that's what it says, right? I mean, again, easy to read, yeah. no assumptions, clear. And if nobody marks a thing up on your details and your drawings, that's an A plus. If someone has to keep bugging you and asking you, what's this? What's that? What's this? That's yeah, right. So you don't want that. So it would be nice to you know, yeah, exactly. hand it over and it's super clean. And the only things they catch are the, oh, oops. <laughs> yeah, but you have to know the drawing when you're making, who going to use it? Who you try to present in that one? So that's your customer. So you, with the customer building mind, you will build a good product. Yep. Anyway, thank you so much. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Leslie. Leslie. Thanks, right. Leslie. Do I just stop sharing thanks, things Leslie. or what do I do? Yeah, I, yeah you could just end it. Sorry. I end it? You can thanks, end it. Yeah, I gave, you, I gave you a host so you, oh, you can okay. end the meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. See you, guys. Bye. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you.